Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at short sales. Just what we talked about in the prior session about buying on margin, which was a risky endeavor. This is another risky endeavor. Short sales. This topic is covered in essentials or principles of investment, either graduate or undergraduate. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them. Put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to complement and supplement your accounting as well, as well as your finance courses. Check out my website if you are studying for your CFA, CPA, CMA, or just simply for your courses. What is the big idea with the short sales? And there is a famous book called The Big Short. I spoke about this book in this series when I talked about the housing crisis. And it's basically The Big Short. Here what they did, the, the investors or the speculators that, that undertook this uh, strategy, they shorted the market. What does short mean? Short means you, you anticipate the market to go down. Therefore, what you do, you sell it first. You sell the market, you anticipate it to go down, then you buy it when it's cheaper. So that's that's the idea. So if you are bullish on a stock, bullish means you are optimistic. If you like a stock, if you think it has a good prospect, you buy. You buy the stock, then you sell when it's higher. That's the idea. Then you sell. If you are bearish, bearish means if you are pessimistic, if you don't like something, you think the future is not good for that something, you go short. It means you sell now and you buy later. It's the opposite. Huh? Yes. Well, I don't have anything to sell. Well, you borrow it and you sell it immediately and you keep the cash. We'll see how it works. Okay. So this is when you do a short sale. A short sale, the sale of shares not owned by the investor, but borrowed through a broker and later purchased to replace them. So this is how it works. First you sell, then you buy the shares later. So the short seller first borrow the shares from the stock broker, then sells it at a later date. Okay. But remember, later you have to buy it. So what is the risk? The risk is huge. The risk is huge. Why? Because you anticipate the stock to go down. The maximum the stock could go down to zero. Okay. So if you if you shorted a stock that's trading at 65, it could go down to zero. You could make a profit of 65. You shorted a stock at 65. This stock could, in theory, could go up to infinity. And if it goes if it goes to infinity, you have to buy it at infinity prices. So your risk is very, very high when you short a stock. OK, then when you buy it back, it's called short covering short position. So when you buy that stock to give it back to the broker, this process is called you are covering your short covering short position. And sometimes what happened when the stock market some days the stock market goes up substantially. And they would say part of it is short covering. What does that mean? It means people who were shorting certain stocks, now they are forced to buy it back. Now, why are they forced to buy it back? You will see in a moment because they have a maintenance call. They are forced to buy it back. When they buy it back, they even push the stock price higher. It's like basically burning themselves because as they buy more, the stock goes up. Okay. So let's take a look at a picture of what we are talking about here. So normally, most likely what you are familiar with is when you buy the stock. When you buy the stock at time zero, you have a, a negative cash flow. You buy the stock and you have to pay for it. Then later at period one, later on a month, a year, you, uh, you would receive a dividend if you waited long enough and you sell the shares. Then you get back your ending price plus the dividend. So that's the normal uh, investing, if you want to call it normal. So basically your profit is... Your ending price plus the dividend minus what you paid. So if you paid $100 for a stock, you got $2 in dividend and you sell it for $105, you have a profit of $7. So this is how you made the profit. When you short a stock, it's kind of the opposite. Well, you do at time zero, you borrow and sell and then you have cash in your pocket. Let's assume you borrow and sell and you have $100,000 cash in your pocket. Here's what's going to happen. At year one, Later on in the few in, in the in the future, you have to do you'd have to do two things. You have to pay any dividend to the to the person that you bought you got the you, you borrowed the share from, and you have to replace the stock. So let's assume that you had to pay dividend of a thousand dollar. Well, you have to pay dividend of a thousand dollar, but you bought the shares at one hundred thousand. Now the shares are only worth eighty thousand. 
And now you have in your hands a hundred thousand dollar. You have one hundred thousand. You have to pay. You have to. You buy the stock at eighty. You pay the shareholder another one thousand. You made a profit of. Um, uh, you made a profit of nineteen thousand. I made the profit looks really good on short selling. Make sure you don't do it. This is pretty risky. But that's the point. Okay, that's the point if you make a profit because you could also what what could happen is the price the ending price of the stock could go up to 120,000 and you only have 100,000 so you always take a huge risk you always take a huge risk with the short sale remember you anticipate the stock to fall so you can buy it at a lower price and remember you have to pay the dividend you have to buy back the share and you have to repay the dividend okay in practice, this is how it works in practice. So the shares loaned out for a short sale are typically provided by a short by the short seller's brokerage firm. So you borrow it from your from your broker. So if you have a Schwab account, Schwab will provide it to you. Now, what Schwab do usually you don't know this is happening. They borrow it from another account. If you know, and that's all what happened. Now, when they borrow it from your account, they don't tell you they borrowed the stock. Because if you want to sell your stock, they will immediately get it from someone else and they will give it to you. Okay, so the owner of the shares need not to know that the shares has been lent out to short sellers. If the owner wishes to sell, they, 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 the, the broker will get the shares from somewhere else or from their own from their own inventory. Okay, so the short sale may have an indefinite term because it keeps on it it could it could keep on going forever. If the brokerage firm cannot locate new shares to replace the ones sold, usually that's not the case. The short seller will need to repay the loan immediately by purchasing the shares in the market. That usually doesn't happen, but in theory it could happen. No firms will would uh, would uh, would force you to do that. Also, the exchange rules require that proceeds from a short sale must be kept in the account of the broker. So you cannot short sell something, get the money and take it somewhere else, another brokerage firm or do something else with it. So the short seller cannot invest these funds to generate income, although large or institutional investors typically, typically receive some income from the proceeds of the short sale being held with the broker. But that's, you know, that's we're talking about large investors. Short sellers are also required to post margin, and this is important, which is collateral, cash or collateral. Either you have cash or you have other securities with the broker to cover losses should the stock rise during the short sale. So what happens if, if the stock price keep on rising, you are more and more under pressure. So what's going to happen is the broker, the broker's risk is, look, if this stock goes up too much, this individual will never buy it back and they will walk away and they will never buy it back and will have to buy back the share. So what they do is they make you post a margin and in case the price went up too high, they'll they'll ask you to even post more margin or sell or give them back the money. Okay. So suppose you are pessimistic on a dot-com stock and its market price right now is $100 and you don't think, you think it's going to go down. So what you do is you tell your broker to sell short 1,000 shares. The broker will borrow 1,000 shares either from another customer or from another broker. And now what you have, you have $100,000 cash in your, in, your, in your account. Why? Because you shorted 1,000 shares at $100. Now suppose also, suppose the broker has a 50% margin requirement on short sales. In other words, you have to have $50,000. 50 50% of 100,000 is 50,000, either in cash or in some other assets. We're going to assume you have those in treasury bill. Okay, so it means you have you have to have fifty thousand dollar in some form or another in assets. Okay, so let's say you have them in treasury bill. So this is what your balance sheet looks like when this transaction takes place. You have one hundred thousand dollar cash in your pocket from sh from the short, but remember, you borrowed those one hundred thousand because you sold the stock. Therefore, you have to buy back this one thousand shares, and right now your liability today is one hundred thousand. You have. 50,000 in treasury bill, this is in your own account, therefore assets minus liabilities equal to equity of 50,000. Therefore, you have equity of 50,000. Your initial percentage is the ratio uh, of the equity in the account, 50,000, to the current value of the shares. So simply put, just like the buying on account, it's the equity divided by the value of the shares. The equity is 50,000 divided by the value of the shares right now. The value of the shares are one hundred thousand dollar okay so the so the percentage margin is fifty percent okay now suppose that the dot com stock went down to 70 so let's suppose the dot com stock went down to 70 now will you be happy about this of course you will be happy because 
that's your whole goal. Your whole goal is the stock to go down because you have 100,000. Now, to buy the stocks, you only need 70,000. So you can keep the remaining, the profit. You can buy the stock, give it back to the share, give it back to the broker, and pocket the thirty thousand. So to cover to cover the short sale, you buy the one thousand shares, which is going to cost you seventy thousand now, and you keep the profit. Okay, because your account was credited a hundred thousand when the shares were borrowed and sold. Your profit is thirty thousand. So your profit equal to the decline in the share price times the number of shares short. Because remember, it declined by thirty. You have one thousand shares you made $30,000 profit. Now you have to be very careful again. Why? Because, because when you're selling short, the price could go against you rather than 70, go down to 70, it could, it could rise. Okay. Like investors who buy stocks on a margin, a short seller must be concerned about the margin call. So if the stock price rises, the margin call, the margin account, the, the margin in the account will fall. So your value will fall. So if the margin fall to a maintenance level, you either have to sell your position or bring some cash because you're going to have what's called a margin call. Okay. Suppose the broker has a maintenance margin call of 30% on short sales. This means the equity in your account must be at least 30% of the value of the short position at all time. So the value should be, so the value of the equity, the numerator divided by the value of the stock has to be at least 30%. So, so how do we find out? What is the price for the stock? So let, let's P, we, we don't know what the P is. Let P be the price of the dot stock, dot com stock. The value of the shares, the value of the shares you must pay back is 1000 shares times P, the price, which is we don't know. And the equity in your account, remember you have 150,000. The equity is minus 1000 shares times P because you have to buy back the share. So your short position in the equity, uh, the, your short position margin ratio is equity divided by the value of the stock. Your equity, which is 150,000 minus 1,000 shares times P divided by the value of the shares, the value of the stock, 1,000 shares times P. So this is what it looks like. So now you're looking, we want to find out if the margin maintenance is 30%, how much can the, can the stock price increase, not drop, because remember, your, your, your concern, it's gonna increase. Well, what you do is you, is, you, is you solve for P, and if you solve for P, We'll find out that the price will be one hundred fifteen dollars and thirty eight cents. Simply put, if the if the price went up to one fifteen thirty eight, this maintenance will be thirty percent. Then you have to either come up now. You have you have to do one of two things. You can either bring more cash to increase this one hundred and fifty thousand, okay? Because you want by increasing this, you increase this, or you have to sell your position or some of your position. So if the dot com stock rises above 115, you'll get a margin call and you will either have to put up additional cash to cover or cover your short position by buying shares to replace the one owned. Simply put, you have to close your position. Once you buy shares, it means you are closing your position. Now what happened if the maintenance call rather than 30, they said for, for this broker for this brokerage firm, it's 0.4 or 40. Under those circumstances, as soon as the price increases to 107.14. So if the, if the margin, if the maintenance margin is 40%, you could do the computation. Notice the higher the margin, the, uh, the lower the sensitivity. It means if the stock goes up a little bit, you're gonna, you're gonna have a margin call. Okay. And you can try 45% if you want to, to find out, you know, if the, the stock price will be like lower than 107. Let's construct the balance sheet if the dot com stock went up to 110. Let's look at this balance sheet if the stock price goes up to 110. Well, this was the original balance sheet that we looked at. When when we bought the stock, we had 100,000 of cash because when we, we shorted the stock at 100, we had 50,000 in treasury bill. Um, our liability is to buy back 1,000 shares. At this point, they are 100. 100 per stock, which is 100,000, and our equity is assets minus the liability. What they're saying here is let's assume the stock goes up to 110. What would happen if the stock goes up to 110? Well, here's what's going to happen. This 100,000 becomes 1,000 shares times 110 equal to 110,000. So this is equal to 110,000. As a result, this is your cash will stay 100,000. Your cash did not move. Your treasury bill is still 50,000. What's going to happen? Your equity will be eating by 10,000. So for every, so every time your, the stock goes up by the same amount, your equity goes down. 
Okay, why? Because as the stock goes up, it's going against your position. Your position is the stock to go down and it's going up. So this is what happened if the stock goes up to 110. And you could do the same thing if it went up to 120. And you could do the same thing if it went down to 90. If it went down to 90, then this becomes 90 and you add 10,000, this becomes 60. Okay, so your, your equity would increase. If the short position maintenance is 40%, how far can the stock rises before the investor gets a margin call? We already did this computation. I believe it was $107 and some change, but you could do it yourself if you're interested. As always, I'm going to remind you to like this recording, share it, put it in playlist. In the next session, we would look at investment companies. As always, I would like to remind you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. If you are studying for your accounting courses, finance courses, or your professional certification, Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.